So you're starting a project. You have a deadline and the client is expecting results. Inspiration can strike at any time, but your client is expecting you to deliver something now. This creates anxiety and anxiety is scientifically proven to stifle creativity. But this is exactly what is asked of you every day as a designer. The good news is that inspiration is everywhere. If this guy can get inspiration from a house cat for a car design, I think it's fair to say that no source of inspiration is too banal or too basic. In this video, we're going to cover some techniques around how to get inspiration from various sources and how to apply it into our own design work. This is going to be the first video of a multi-part series. This first video is going to focus on borrowing from related disciplines. The reason why it's important to find inspiration from different sources is because if all industrial designers look to the same sources for inspiration, everyone's work is going to start to look similar and it's going to be hard to stand out. So on that note, cinematography composition is a great source of inspiration for industrial designers. Cinematography is the way to tell a story visually, usually in movies. Good industrial design tells a story visually as well, so there are a lot of strong parallels here. Now, let's look at this example from the movie Fargo. In this shot, we see our main character, Jerry. There's a certain tension in this scene. You can tell he feels a little bit trapped or anxious. And I think a big part of it is the use of vertical lines. They're obscuring Jerry's face and they almost look like prison bars. As the prospect of his failure becomes more and more imminent, the shots become progressively more cramped. This shot in particular is interesting because it's pulled back and far away further highlighting the fact that Jerry is alone, he feels isolated, and no one is around to help him. Once again, notice how confined Jerry looks in this shot. He's being completely surrounded and framed by other walls and objects, creating a very anxiety-inducing scene. In terms of how to apply this sort of visual storytelling to industrial design, it's actually simpler than you might think. If we look at this other pulled back shot of Jerry here, we can see that there's a stark contrast between the car and the white snow covered ground as Jerry trudges forward. I can't help but think of the Xbox Series S when I look at this shot. I'd be willing to bet that there were a lot of stark hyper simplified images in the preliminary mood boards for the Series S. You can start to see the parallels here and how you can apply cinematography composition to product design composition. There's a clear focal point in this shot, with Jerry moving towards the area of highest contrast in the frame. It's the same with the Xbox Series S, where there's a clear focal point and hierarchy to the design. It's a black spot on a white canvas. Another common cinematography method is called the frame within a frame. The frame within a frame is typically used to bring emphasis to a certain subject or to separate different elements of the shot. There are hundreds of examples of this exact technique being used in product design as well. One of the most prolific designers to do this was Dieter Rams for Brown. Notice how Dieter Rams separates each of the components into their own sort of individual frames. Rams is treating this product as a canvas for compositional work and design. Also, if you've made it this far, you probably like the content and you should probably subscribe. Most of you guys aren't subscribed and you can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. Another great source of inspiration for industrial design is from gesture drawing. Understanding the areas of tension, the forms, and the body directly relate to how to create tension and balance in products. I could probably do an entirely separate video on this subject alone, but I'll go over the basics really quickly. Gesture drawing helps you to find the movement that connects different parts of a form. So for example, this human body creates a sort of X shape here along the longest axes. But these gestural movements can be seen in everything, in waves, in windswept trees, everything. The cat meme from before is actually using the gesture of a house cat to suggest the form of a car. The long lines of a sports car often mimic a predatory animal just as it's preparing to pounce on its prey. Cats and cars have nothing to do with each other, but by applying the principles of gesture drawing to product design, there's real potential to design something novel. But these are still all visual examples. You can go way more abstract than that even and still practically apply it to product design. So for example, I draw a lot of inspiration from Nicolas Cage's acting. He has these really overly dramatic actions and movements to clearly convey an idea. Ever heard of a line? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and being tell you pissed blood? Ah! 
Now, to be fair, Nick Cage's acting seems really strange at times, especially when taken out of context, but it's important to understand where he's coming from. Nick Cage's aim is not to be natural in his acting or to imitate life in any way. His purpose is to dramatize an idea or emotion. His style is actually inspired by theater acting or the kabuki style of acting. In that setting, you need to convey an emotion to people all the way in the back of the theater through exaggerated movements. I think that applying this idea to industrial design in the right setting can be really powerful. I think a really cool brief that I haven't really seen before would be to design a handheld object that is recognizable from 50 yards away. Many great designs have this sort of exaggerated quality to them. So the KitchenAid mixer silhouette comes to mind. There are many others too, especially things like high-end accessories and sunglasses. Cause all sunglasses definitely comes to mind simply because of how distinctive and recognizable they are, even from a great distance. Another source of more abstract inspiration is music. But what I'm actually talking about is the musical performance itself. One thing I find especially interesting about that clip is the way that the violinist uses such large sweeping movements with her bowing hand, her right hand. This creates a really big, powerful sound. And you can easily apply this exaggerated bowing style to your sketching and see how it changes the way you design. Now remember, the tools and the way you use them informs your design process just as much as anything else. So you can try for yourself. If you draw from your wrist on a little post-it note, you're gonna get a certain type of design and a certain type of aesthetic and a certain type of concept. If you draw from your shoulder on a giant 18 by 24 inch pad with charcoal, it's gonna completely change the types of designs you make. And this big charcoal pad is probably gonna be more in line with the violinist that we saw just before in terms of visual style. Really, my point is that inspiration is everywhere. You can find it in concept art, you can find it in architecture, sculpture, and of course, nature. We're gonna talk more about it in part two of the series, but the main thing is to just keep your eyes and mind open. I wanna end with this clip though. This isn't so much a practical or actionable tip, but if you can apply even 30% of the intensity that this woman does to playing piano, I guarantee that you will find many sources for inspiration and you will be a great designer. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave a like and subscribe. It does help me out and it motivates me to continue making content.